Okay, so if you watched the mainstream media this morning, or if you're going to watch it this afternoon, my guess is that you heard, or you're going to hear, that the peaceful protests yesterday were the Million Person March were filled with violence and hatred and intolerance, and nothing could be further from the truth, at least not at the peaceful protest that I attended, that I spoke at. And so what I want to do is give you a first-hand account, a detailed report of exactly what happened, what it was like to attend that speech or attend that protest, and what it was like to speak at the protest, to try and counter the manipulated narrative that I'm sure the media is producing and is going to produce. So I have a video. It was a recording of, of my speech and of the protest itself. And I want to walk with you step by step through the protest, describing what it was like. So on your screen, you see Sean Newman. He was the MC for the, for the Lloyd Minster rally. He's fantastic. I can't uh, speak highly enough about Sean. He's an excellent MC. He keeps everything on time and, and he's short, sweet, and to the point. He's an excellent MC. Now I arrived at around 9.30 to the protest. It started at 10. When I arrived, there were already numerous protesters there, peaceful protesters. The air was electric. You could feel this palpable excitement um, in, in, in the atmosphere. And people were filing in. All of them were peaceful. They weren't radical. They weren't extreme. They were instead regular, normal, everyday Canadians, Albertans, individuals from Saskatchewan who simply want to protect their children and the children of the country in school, in public school, and who want to make sure the parents have a say in what their children are being taught. So we all get to the protest. The speeches start at 10 o'clock. But when we did so, when we started to speak, or were just about to, a very small group, 10 at most, uh, of counter-protesters, a small group of counter-protesters at the back of the uh, group, at the back of the crowd, began to shout. And they began to scream. And they began to demonstrate rather obnoxiously, like toddlers, it was embarrassing, their um, beliefs. Now, granted, no one really knew what their beliefs were because what they were chanting was totally unintelligible. There was no rational argument. There wasn't an argument at all. Instead, these counter-protesters just thought of simple slogans, and chanted them over and over and over again, like priests of Baal. So here's the video, or here's part of it, and we'll just walk through it step by step. I want my day to have a peaceful protest. And if they come and want to counter-protest peacefully, folks, that's okay. So that's Sean, of course, saying that if these counter-protesters want to counter-protest, then by all means, they have a right to do so, as long as it's peaceful. And, and of course, we entirely agree with that. And both sides were or at least our side, was, was just asking for respect. That was, that was the goal, a peaceful, respectful protest on both sides. It's okay. And we can be respectful back and forth. And that's what this is about. This now, there you just saw a, a uh, small angle of just and how forth. large and that's the protest was in favor of what, we were, of what we're proposing, of what we're advocating for. In total, I heard that, or in total, I heard the number of individuals at the protest on our side, numbered around 650 to 700, somewhere in there, which is remarkable considering the protest itself was held on a Wednesday morning when individuals, when people are working. Um, but the outpouring of support and the encouragement that was present was fantastic. It was a magnificent crowd, excellent crowd. This is about, this is our community too over here. And so I want to make sure that uh, we all know that. And if you see somebody who's getting disgruntled by it, go in the like, put a hand on my shoulder. I want Again, is there anything extreme about this? Is there anything extreme about this at all? You listen to these unions, you listen to these bureaucrats, these radical activists who made it sound like these protests, or this one in particular, at least two, was uh, extreme, made it sound like it was dangerous, made it sound like it was violent. Nothing could be further from the truth. You can see and hear with your own eyes, Sean and, and all the other speakers advocating for a peaceful protest, one that goes without a hitch. So after Sean finished his introduction the first speaker was Leighton Gray he was the first speaker to talk Leighton Gray's a of course he's quite well known in Alberta he's a brilliant man and his speech reflected his intellectual uh, tenacity it was an excellent speech it was a short speech but it was to the point and it was grounded in love you could tell it was grounded in compassion and and he spoke eloquently but when Leighton started to speak those counter protesters at the back those counter protesters at the uh, back of the crowd began to really chant and they began to really scream 
And they began to really utter whatever slogans they might have thought up in their minds, even though, again, they didn't make sense. They were disruptive. They were noisy. And yet, in spite of all of that, Leighton continued to press forward. So his speech was excellent. And then after his uh, speech, it was my turn to speak. And so here is here is uh, the start of my speech. That's what we want. So next, we got an economist, freelance speaker, and theologian, Tanner Naday. So here we go. And folks, don't let them get close. I want you to pull in. So Sean's talking about those counter protesters who were trying to disrupt all of the speeches. They were simply trying to shout over the speeches so that the speakers themselves would stop speaking. You're my shield. Be it. Get in here. Don't allow them to take over this day. We organize this. This is us, not them. Let them shout their things Again, and let us talk crowd. in our way. Excellent. Next crowd. up, Tanner today. Oh. I want to talk. I want to tell you a story today. I was close to the mic. I want to tell you a story today about a man named Daniel. So my speech yesterday was about Daniel. It was about Daniel's first years in the Babylonian Empire. It was the purpose of my speech was to demonstrate and show the comparison between modern day Canada and ancient Babylon. And I wanted to show how when young Daniel was taken captive into Babylon after Jerusalem was sacked and conquered by King Nebuchadnezzar, he was appointed to be in the king's service, but first he had to be indoctrinated. That was the purpose of my, my speech. And then to draw a comparison to Canada in the modern day. Now you've probably heard of Daniel. This is the same Daniel from Daniel in the lion's den. But at that point in time, Daniel was already an old man. I want to tell you a story about Daniel from when he was a young man. So at this point, I'm just trying to uh, uncover a rhythm to speak because the counter protesters, although you can't hear them just yet in the video, you'll be able to hear them soon, were, cause, were being disruptive in the back. And so I was trying to uh, uncover a desirable rhythm and method of speech to try and one, minimize the effect of those counter protesters while also remaining engaging for the rest of the crowd who wanted to hear what, what was being said. You see, Daniel lived in Jerusalem. Daniel was an Israelite. Daniel was a young man living in Israel peacefully until one day an empire. So you can hear, you can hear them in the back. I'm skipping because there's a swear. <laughs> it's not that that's funny, but there's a, someone swore in the back because they were having a, a kerfluffa. They were causing a ruckus. And um, anyways, here's the next part. You're going to serve this massive country. You're going to serve Babylon. You're going to be an individual, a bureaucrat. You're going to be someone who worships the Babylonian state. So I'm talking again about how Daniel was captured by Babylon. And then Babylon said, you're going to be a bureaucrat, Daniel. We're putting you in the service of the king. But first, you have to be trained in the Babylonian ways of life. You're coming to my court. But you see, the Babylonians didn't put Daniel into the king's service immediately. You could just point it out here. You see, Daniel grew up with Israelite views. Daniel grew up with Israelite traditions. Daniel grew up with an Israelite religion. And these are directly contrary, or these were directly contrary to Babylon. And so the Babylonians said first, Daniel... Now, as the protesters continued to increase in their vitriol, I thought it necessary to cease taking breaks in my speech and instead just roll through it because it seemed like the more I was able to talk, with less pausing, the the um, less effective the counter protesters were. So you'll see, you'll listen to my speech um, increase in speed without pausing. We're going to indoctrinate you. First, we're going to make you a Babylonian. First, we're going to take away your Israelite religion and we're going to impose upon you a Babylonian religion. We're going to take away your Israelite identity. We're going to put upon you a Babylonian identity. All of your Israelite traditions are going to be replaced with a Babylonian tradition, Babylonian ways of life. And so we're first going to send you to a government school. You're going to learn what it means to be a Babylonian. So now you can really start to hear the protesters. And I think it was because they were making their way to the front. You'll see soon that they actually come right in front of the stage to try and be disruptive. 
you're going to become a Babylonian. In fact, the Babylonians went so far as to change Daniel's name from Daniel to Belteshazzar. This is all in Daniel chapter 1. And so you see, desiring, hoping, praying that Daniel would be changed from this Israelite man of God to a Babylonian servant of state, he went to school and he was told you're going to worship Babylonian... At this point, the protesters brought out a siren, you know, a bullhorn, and then things became really distracting, or they tried to really distract because that was so loud, and it was so, well, it was so obnoxious that it was hard to keep focus. But again, the crowd is magnificent. They did a wonderful job of, of ignoring that side of the protest and instead focusing on the speakers. Tradition. You're going to worship the Babylonian government. You are going to be made a dedicated servant of Babylon. Do you see the comparison between what's happening today and what happened back then? The crowd is phenomenal. They were much louder when they clapped than, of course, what comes across on video. But remember, there were hundreds and hundreds of people at this protest. You see how Babylon hasn't died. Babylon's just come to Canada. Here you have our government. Again, here the, you have massive crowd. governments. Here you have Justin Trudeau. There are a few protesters. Not everyone in this shot are protesters. The, the individuals in front aren't protesting. Just the one or two or three at the back. But again, they're causing such a distraction because of how loud they're, they're shouting. In Ottawa. Here you have all of these bureaucrats, this faceless organization, wanting new servants of state wanting new individuals to hold up the iron apparatus of their rule. Here you have all of these bureaucrats who want more power, they want more control, and they need individuals who don't think for themselves. Yeah. So at that point, I was pointing at the protesters because they were being so um, uncivilized. They were acting so contrary to what is considered proper and just and, and appropriate in society. They weren't thinking for themselves. Instead, they were just repeating whatever maxim they were given without second thought. And it was, honestly, it was, it was entirely inappropriate. Wasn't right at all. <laughs> and the crowd knew it. The people knew it. And so here it is. You have children who have been raised up by you, loving parents. Now you can there really are children the who have Canadian values. Values from the Constitution. Values which are just and righteous. They think for themselves, and government can't have that because government does that which cannot be thought of. They do what's irrational. So what do they do to make new servants of state? What do they do to make new individuals who worship government, who worship big bureaucracy, who worship the liberals and Justin Trudeau? They put them in government schools and they say, you're going to learn government values. What I found so fascinating is that the shouts of the counter protesters had absolutely nothing to do with the speeches. They had absolutely nothing to do with the protest itself. The purpose of the protest was to say, we want parents to know what children are being taught. And that wasn't mentioned at all by the counter protesters. They had an entirely different agenda in attending this, this meeting, this rally. And so there are children go to school. There they go and they're taught they can be whoever and whatever they want to be. There they're taught objectively that there is no such thing as objective truth. There they're taught that they can do whatever they want, whenever they want, and be whoever they want to be. Two plus two is five. War is peace. Ignorance is strength. So obviously, here's one of the protesters. And it was at this point that they began to come right up front on stage. They began to, to try and crowd the stage, to try and be not only distracting with their audio, but also with their physical presence, with their, um, with their, their bodies, language, and, and, and signs. You see, they're indoctrinated with all of these values so that eventually they may come to believe absolutely anything. They're even told that young Daniel, if he wants, can become Danielle. Well, remember, throughout all of this, it was still peaceful. Even though they were crowding the stage, none of the protesters um, who were advocating for what, what we believe in were were acting violently towards them no one uh you know no one was was injured no one was hurt no one was assaulted instead they were just it, you could feel tension was rising you could feel <laughs> you could feel the tension rising in the at, at the stage you see if they do that if government can achieve such a thing they can do whatever they wish whatever they want whenever they want because no man will question them all of these young servants of government all of these young individuals who now believe in the state will say, yes, Prime Minister, 
Yes, government official. Yes, bureaucrat. We will do whatever you want because our identity, our new identity is government. So then I, the purpose then of the speech was to say you have government who right now is trying to totally indoctrinate our students to create a new identity that's founded not in Jesus Christ, not in the almighty God, not in accordance with Genesis, which says you are made in the image of God, but rather in the image of government. They're trying to create a new man, so to say, whose image is molded in the shape of government so that these young children, when they grow up, come to associate their very existence with the existence of big government, which of course would only cement, come to cement its power. Now, as hopeless as that sounds, and as desperate as that sounds, you and I know that isn't the end of the story of Daniel. There are other chapters in Daniel. You see, in spite of Babylon, mighty Babylon's attempts to completely indoctrinate Daniel with new Babylonian views, Daniel himself remained resolute. Daniel remained strong. Daniel remained faithful. And even though Babylon said your new identity is going to be made in the image of Nebuchadnezzar, even though Daniel said your new image is going to be made in the image of the state, Daniel said, I am made in the image of God. Right. That was, that was one of the crescendos of the speech. That was one of the crescendos of the entire talk, which was to say, even though government's trying to make us in the image of government, even though government is trying to make students in the image of government, the truth is that we're made in the image of God. That's, that's the truth. And that's what, what people need to know. We are here with the same spirit. Look at the number. Massive compared to a few measly protesters. Look at the difference. Yeah, and the, and the difference was magnificent. I mean, it was... There was no comparison, really. The difference in the number of, of protesters versus counter protesters was almost you almost couldn't measure it because it was such a vast, monstrous um, difference. It was huge. But I want to show you and you see this is exactly what's happening where the vast majority of individuals know that the indoctrination in school is wrong. But a few loud, organized activists, radical, ravenous, ridiculous activists make a lot of noise and say, we want you to accept our way of life as the national standard. And it's wrong. Right. So what was happening there was um, I was pointing. You'd see I was pointing to the right hand side of the stage. The reason I was doing so, the reason I was doing so was because those protesters had then moved over to the right hand side of the right hand side of the stage itself. So here's I'm switching videos here. Here's one from my uh, uh, personal page. And you can see where these protesters have moved to. You can see how they've moved to the right of the stage. They have signs and then they started to climb on the stage. Now, it was at that point that a couple of, of gentlemen who who uh, <laughs> are larger than, than five feet tall, again, very peacefully, no threats, no acts of violence decided to, and I was quite thankful for it, come and just sit by the stage, come and stand by the stage. Again, not to not to harm anyone, but just to, to um, as you can see here, just to show that, or just to be a, a solid presence that, you know, kept people from, from climbing on top of, on top of the stage. And so I was very thankful for that. It was, it was very uh, uh, generous of them to do so. How much have we got to So we are here today with the same spirit of Daniel. This, of course, is not against all teachers. You know that my father was a calculus teacher at the comp. And like so many other teachers, he knows and knew and continues to understand that what's happening is wrong. Right. So I wanted to, to demonstrate or not demonstrate. I wanted to show and to to speak about how we weren't blaming every teacher for what's happening. They're given their orders from a faceless bureaucracy from above. That's the point I was making at this particular time. But again, you have this, this bureaucracy that says your children are going to be ours. You as parents are raising them, but we are going to be raising them. They're made in the image of God. We're going to make them in the image of Justin Trudeau. We're going to make them in the image of the state. We're going to make them in the image of government. And our answer to them is short and sharp. They're our children, not yours. We'll raise them as we should. <laughs> Oh, again, the crowd was so magnificent. The people there were magnificent. The entire protest was peaceful. And it, 
well, the speeches themselves prevailed against those counter protesters who were trying to silence everything that we were saying. Now, what that really means is that Jesus Christ prevailed over those counter protesters who were trying to silence everything we were saying because Christ always prevails. Christ is truth itself. You know, <laughs> truth has been canceled before. People tried to cancel Jesus Christ before. I'm not saying I'm Christ, of course not. But I was speaking the story from Scripture, which is God's word. And people have tried to cancel it before. You know, they tried to bury Christ. They crucified him, and then they buried him underground. But three days later, he was risen from the dead. He was resurrected from the dead, and he lives now eternally. So you can try and kill the truth. It doesn't matter. The truth will simply live once again. So what are these counter-protesters screaming and shouting and acting like toddlers having a temper tantrum, trying to completely dismantle and destroy all of the speakers and or the speeches that they were giving yesterday? Do they honestly think that's going to stop this peaceful movement that continues to grow in Canada? How could it? The movement itself, the movement to protect children, to have parents know what's happening in school, to let parents raise their children as they should, is grounded in truth. And therefore, it can't be defeated.